Hi, my name is Sherry Emery. I am the founder of Globe Right Marketing, which is a marketing agency specialising in digital marketing for the beauty industry. We create and manage digital marketing platforms for businesses such as uh, social media platforms, meet websites, email, that, that kind of thing. Um, previous to setting up Globe Right Marketing, I was marketing director at L'Oreal for a decor, and previous to that, I was head of marketing for spas and salons at Elemis. So, the reason why I started Globe Right Marketing was because I really wanted to be able to help businesses in a more tangible way and helping them to conquer the digital landscape by offering them services to help them grow and succeed. So why are we doing today's session? The aim of the session is for you to come away feeling confident with clear guidelines and actionable points to implement on your social media platforms right now during the COVID-19 crisis. Before we kick off, I wanted to um, address a question which I've received a few times. So the question is, can you be using social media during COVID-19 or does this negate your furlough agreement? Great question. The advice on the UK government website is as follows. Once you are on furlough, you will not be able to work for your employer, but you can undertake training or volunteering subject to public health guidance. As long as you are not making money for your employer, or providing services to your employer. Now, I know that this is all pretty great, but how we have understood it at Globe Right Marketing is after a lot of research, if you are on furlough, as long as you are not promoting bookings or sales, then you should be fine. If you are not on furlough, then you are fine to continue to promote the services of your brand. Some great resources that we've been using um, is, of course, Gov UK, uh, Professional Beauty. The, um, the guys at Professional Beauty have been fantastic in terms of really researching what's available for our industry um, and what you can and can't do. Martin Lewis, Money Expert. Um, I know a lot of you guys use him anyway, but he's got some great resources on his website. So I'd really advise checking that out. And the British Beauty Council, their um, email that, that goes out almost daily, I think, has been fantastic. There's some really great resources, resources on there as well. So I would really encourage you having a little look at that. Okay, so let's get into today's session. So as we have never been in a global pandemic, there is no exact playbook on what to do in terms of marketing. No one is going to be an exact expert at this, but what I can do is give you some really good guiding principles to help you with your strategy and your posts to make thoughtful decisions as the crisis evolves. So right now, social media is crucial for many of the businesses that have had to temporarily shut their doors because of COVID-19. And there is no better way to stay top of mind in an unobtrusive way. Your followers are spending more time online than they ever have before. So it does present you with a unique opportunity to deepen your relationship with your audience and increase brand affinity in an authentic and empathetic way. In fact, Facebook and Instagram have both seen a 40% increase in usage due to COVID-19, with views for Instagram Live and Facebook Live doubling in one week, which is crazy. So here are some guidelines on how to navigate your social media through this. Number one, keep posting. Please don't go dark. This is not the time to not be communicating. You need to keep communicating with your customers. They are online and they want to hear from you. So your followers are spending more time online than ever before and you want to stay connected with them. If you're unable to market or sell products or services right now, focus on sharing content that aligns with your brand values instead. For example, if you are a wellbeing brand or a wellbeing spa, 
you might want to talk about your business ethos. Why do you believe in well-being? Why why did your brand start with well-being? What is it that makes your brand uh, different? What are the benefits? All of that kind of stuff is completely fine to talk about and you should be talking about that. Um, on the flip side, be careful that you are not posting too often. More than once a day is too often. Once a day or once every other day is a good amount to be posting. You don't want to overload your audience's feed and then lose followers in the long term. Just be really mindful. Like, you know yourself that your social media is probably really busy at the moment. Um, And it's super easy for messages to get lost if you are posting way too frequently without the engagement levels there. So with that in mind, when is a good time to post? If you used to post between... 4 and 6 p.m. because that was prime time, that was when your customers were on their way home usually, Um, your timings will have changed. Like, without a doubt, during COVID-19, with lockdown, people at home, your timings have changed. 4 to 6 p.m. is probably no longer peak time. I mean, it might be, but it's probably not. So your prime time might now be 1 to 2 p.m., but how do you know and how do you actually check that your gut feeling is right? Luckily, we have data for this. So um, if you go onto the insights drop down in Facebook and Instagram, you can see your audience behavior for the past week or even further if you want to carry on looking back. Um, I guess because this is during COVID-19, I probably wouldn't go too far back because your data will be skewed. So if you want to see, right, okay, you know what, I really want to see for the last three weeks what the impact has been, then only go three weeks back. If you're going to go back months and months, then your data is going to be wrong. So go back into your insights tab, go onto Facebook. Facebook have got some great insights for um, businesses anyway. So go in and have a really good explore. Maybe create like an Excel template in terms of when, um, so you can really see when your customers are engaged. And you can even do a um, before COVID and during COVID and an after COVID. It's interesting for you to see when your customers are, um, are engaged. The um, reason why it's good for you to know when your customers are engaged is because um, if you are posting content that's out of sync for when your customers are online, then your posts are going to get missed, which means your engagement levels are going to massively drop, which is not the aim of the game. So you really want to make sure that you're posting when your customers are actually online, which kind of makes sense, right? You want to go to the shop when the shop's open, kind of the same thing. Um You also need to know who your audience is. Now, I know this sounds really obvious, but it's it's actually not. So it's so important to know who your audience is. If in your head, or um, if you have a gut feeling that your audience is primarily 25 to 34, because that's what your who your team is, um, and a 50-50 split in gender, I would expect your content and the direction of your content and the tone of voice and your captions and that kind of stuff to be really different to if your audience was a 35 to 54 and 87% women. You would then tailor your content according to your audience insights. So if your audience is primarily women and a little bit older, um, then make sure that your content's more relevant for that age group. Um, your audience is based in the same place actually as the insights were before for for when to post so just go ahead go ahead in there it will tell you when your um, customers are online so you know when to post but also what their gender is and what their age range is so sometimes I'll go onto my customers' um, insights and I'll see that they've kind of got a pretty even split between uh 25 to 55 and that's absolutely fine that's that's great so don't feel like oh okay well I've got a really even split so how do I know what what kind of content go with content that is um unique to the brand right okay So if you don't know either of these things, please take 10 minutes today to make sure you really understand your audience and their engagement behaviour. This is super important and if it only takes 10 minutes, please, please, please take the time to do it. 
um, I promise your um, engagement levels will go up because your content will start speaking to the people that are actually tuning in. Okay, number two, do good and provide value. I want you to really ask yourself, what is the purpose of your social media right now? Once you've looked at the current state of the conversation and who your audience is, determine the role your brand can play. And most importantly, if your audience wants or needs anything from you in an organic and helpful way. So this isn't about boosting loads of content or paying for loads of content. The point now is to really do this all in an organic way. So that means naturally. Um, so is your social media message helping your audience by perhaps spreading good news and hope and giving helpful tips for skincare routines or promoting self-healing like meditation, yoga, yoga guidelines um, during this global crisis? By focusing on engagement first and providing extra education through videos, posts and captions, you can turn your social media channels into valuable resources for your audience. And that is what we're trying to do. Number three, be empathetic. You're likely experiencing a lot of the same emotions um, as your audience is. You might be feeling concerned, fearful, uncertainty, and probably some cabin fever. Hello, I am experiencing cabin fever. Um, now is the time to lead with empathy. Show them your human side, show them who you are, show them show them your face. Now is the time to get in front of that, that camera and really show them um, who you and your, your team are. Focus your social approach on responding to your community's questions and fostering a sense of connection. So like I just said, really um, getting your team's face out there, getting your face out there, really, you know, your 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 regular customers probably really miss coming to see you, you guys. So, um, so some posts around that might be really nice. Through this approach, you can position your brand as a port in the storm. So your customers know, you know what, if I go onto that onto that, that social media, I'm going to find something really funny. I'm going to find some really useful tips. Or you know what, I really need to do a mask. Or I really need to do some exfoliation. I know where I'm going to go to go and get that information. And we want that to be you. So ignoring COVID-19 or pretending like everything is normal can come across as tone deaf and you risk alienating your audience when your business reopens. So this is a really crucial time because if you do strike this um, tone of voice wrong, then it can be really detrimental for your business. So what I was saying earlier about really knowing who your audience is and really um, listening to the conversation, really seeing what kinds of questions being asked is so important because if you kind of strike the, the wrong balance, it's it's not going to be great. Also, something else to remember is COVID-19 is affecting everyone around the world, but in very different ways. So remember to think outside of your own personal situation, have empathy for your followers and offer compassion. You don't have to mention COVID-19 in every single one of your posts, but you do need to take into consideration the tone of your captions and how it could be interpreted by people facing different reality than your own. So some of your followers may have lost their jobs. Some are caring for a loved one. Some are trying to work at home with a toddler. Some might be sick themselves, etc. So just make sure that your um, posts have an empathetic approach, that they're really mindful. Um, this is also really valid for like when you're posting memes and stuff. Just be careful that your meme um, is not striking the wrong balance would be my advice. Okay, so. Number four. number four, don't turn a global emergency into a platform to promote. So as customers isolate themselves and their families, events get postponed and businesses make decisions to close. It might be really tempting to find new ways to stimulate your business. We hear you, I hear you, like that makes sense. However, audiences can smell 
opportunistic brands from a mile away and they won't be scared to call you out for being unethical during this time. So what started out as a post about a global crisis could easily become a crisis for your own brand. And this goes back to being empathetic. Just really think about what it is that you're posting and could this be interpreted in a different way? Is it um, authentic? Is it genuine? You know, and then going back to number two, like, is it is it actually helpful? Are you actually helping your audience? Are you trying to provide um, a post of value? Or are you trying to um, pr- provide a post that promotes sales? So just really think about um, what the intention of your post is. Um, okay, so those are the four guidelines that I would recommend, just really keeping in mind. And now that you know those, we can go on to um, planning out your content. So with those guidelines in mind, in the back of your head, really guiding you down, you can start to create your your content in line with that. So here are some three main trends which which have been coming up in Google search. People are searching for solutions to kids stuck at home. Working at home and working out from home. Recipes. Has anyone else seen a massive increase in banana bread recipes? And now all I can think about is banana bread. And loads of other things like that about being in lockdown. So kind of keep that in the back of your your mind. People are um, looking for things to do at home. Number two. People are still planning for the future. So searches for weddings and birthdays are as high as they have ever been. And people are still planning for upcoming seasonal events. Okay. And number three, people are seeking positivity as demonstrated by searches for keeping calm and staying calm, increasing by 31% in the last two weeks. So we know that anxiety levels are really, really high. Um, you know, we are best placed, we're in such a wellness focused industry that we really can be actually offering um, our audiences advice on how to keep calm, you know, like um, some breathing techniques, some massage techniques, those kinds of things. Those are the kinds of things that um, would go down really well in this time. So with these trends in mind, And with our guidelines in mind, how do you translate these into something useful that you can actually post? So here are some ideas. These are just five quick fire ideas um, that you could use on your social platforms. So because people are still craving human interaction, um, get on Instagram and Facebook Live and do a live Q&A, do an at-home facial routine. You know, it doesn't have to be every single day. You can do a, you can do an Instagram Live once a week or Facebook Live once a week. Um, Set it at a time that you know your consumers are going to be engaged. So before, when I was talking about really finding out when your consumers are engaged, set your Instagram and Facebook Live for those times that customers are going to be available. So if it's going to be doing food time, bath time, that kind of thing, don't do it for that time. Okay. Number two, create video content on your phone of what your skincare routine now looks like or therapist beauty tips for at home at home facials and massage customers want to know how to keep up that amazing glowing skin that they spend a lot of money on um in the salon in the spa and they, but now they need to do it at home so you really want to make sure that you're giving them some great tips for how to keep it up at, at home. Um, so when businesses do reopen, you are top of mind. You, They are like, right, you know what? I really need to go and visit that, that salon. They gave me some great tips. And they can really start investing in the expertise of your content. Number three, be real. What does your self-isolation actually look like? Is it puzzles and wine or is it more chaos and coffee? Take a photo, put it on stories. The likelihood is your customers are also facing a really similar scenario. They want to connect with you. They want to engage. They want to feel like other people are also out there fighting the same fight. So be really real with your your followers. You don't have to um, pretend everything's rosy because it's probably not. 
Um, are you reading or downloading some useful links like recipes or activities for homeschooling or some fun games which your audience might also appreciate? If so, share them. Share them. It's a really, really great way to do it. You can put the link on any of your social media platforms. You can then link back to your website if you want to. There's loads of different ways of doing it, but definitely, definitely share them. Um, and share your plans for the future. Don't be afraid to talk about the future. I know um, when I speak to my customers, a lot, of, a, a lot of them are asking me, oh, are you sure it's the right thing to be talking about the future? Yes, talk about the future. People want to hear about that party that you're going to throw when all of this is over, which I want an invite to. Um, people really, really want to know what's going to be going on in the future. This isn't going to be going on for, forever. And yes, our lives have massively changed, but it's really important to... Um, to be showing them that maybe you've got some awesome plants coming up in the future that they will want to be a part of. It's going to really help to spread positivity and um, a little bit of joy. Okay, so to wrap up on today's talk, I have given you five content ideas to try out on your social on your social channels, four top media guidelines for navigating your messaging, and three um, current search trends. So let me know how you get on. If you've got any questions, please get in touch with me. My name is Sherry. Um, we're on social media under Globe Right Marketing and our email is hello at globewrightmarketing.com. So thank you so much for your time. Um, this has been so much fun. I hope you guys are safe and healthy and sending good vibes. All right, bye.